All right, Shalom. We want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushah, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and much love, prayers, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. That's teaching his word in sincerity and truth, and that's teaching his name in Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushah. All right, this is a, a quick lesson we want to go over. Uh, basically about how the Lord molds your character, how the Lord, you know, chastises us to make us go a certain way, the way he wants us to go. Because remember, this is the Lord's moving, and it's all according to the Lord's will, you know. Uh, it's uh, Revelations chapter 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. See, so... The Lord chastised the ones he loved, and he said, be zealous, least, he said, so that you will repent. Because when the Lord wake up his men, the Lord wakes up his men that they will repent, and they will tra they'll turn from their transgressions. They're coming to this truth, they're crying to his name, praying to his name, and they're going to do the will of the Lord, which is to go out and prophesy. But before they prophesy, they'll learn of the Lord. And the thing is, the chastising... That the Lord do is that the burdens and the and the, the hardship He put us in. Even the Lord put us through hardship when we was of the world and didn't even know His name. The Lord put us through obstacles and and and, and burdens so that when we did find out who the Lord was, you know, brothers sincerely repented. Brothers came into the truth and didn't fall away. They endured until the end. Cause the thing is, is that in order to be the elect, you have to endure until the end, man. You know, you have to strive in righteousness. And um, when you get, you know, into the uh, blue letter on the uh, <clears throat> on the word chasten in Revelation three nineteen, it's pi duo. All right, and it says to train children to be instructed or taught or learn to cause one to learn mm. to chastise to chastise or castigate with words to correct of those who are molding the character of others. By reproof and admonition. So the Lord, Yahweh, you know, Yahweh Shai, you know, they're father figures unto us. Just like we look at our spiritual fathers like Great Millstone. The apostles and elders of Great Millstone, they're father figures through the spirit unto us. And sometimes you get chastised. You get chastised so that what? You can walk in the ways of righteousness. As you as a father, if you got kids, for those that got kids, you know, you'll chastise your son so that what? He'll do right by you. Or he'll do right on his own you know when you're not around you know they, they say of the world you know um when, when when you actually got whooped by your parents when you was young you when you get a certain age you thank them because you're not like the rest of the knuckleheads out there man and you know better that, hey that's why they had like the term you know like whether it be the military or you know like how you know they say with like parents you know with their children or oh, i'll whoop you in the shape boy mm -hmm. you know what whoop you in the shape the shape is molding you, you know, or even like when you take it to the actual physical level, even though we mean this in a spiritual manner, like when, when you when you first born, you know, you'll have the grandmothers, they know the certain techniques to do to a baby, you know, to get him right. And what they do, they mold your head, they shape your head, you know. So it's that same way how the most high, let me read this um, definition real quick again. It says, uh, of those who are molding the character of, of others by reproof and admonitions of God to chasten by the affliction of evils and calamities. Mm -hmm. So the Lord is molding us by the different things in which we go through. The, the evils that we face every day, you know, during our daily walks within this truth, the, the sudden uh, calamities that we may face, you know, you get uh, shipwrecked, you know, with your car, you know what I'm saying? You may have a, a tremendous toothache, you go through bodily infirmities, different things that, you know, just come up out of nowhere and, and strike you, you know, that's a chastening of the Lord. You know, whether if you're going off or whether if you're just suffering for righteousness. But it's something that the Most High wants uh, to do within your life that he's trying to mold you for you to go a certain way and for you to have a certain mind frame about things. Okay? So, going on in this uh, definition, it says, uh, yeah, I read it again. Of God to chasten by the affliction of evils and calamities, to chasten with blows, to scourge, of a father punishing his son, of a judge ordering one to be scourged. Now, mind you, this is in righteousness. We ain't we not Edomites, man. We Israelites. And guess what? 
you know, the Israelites who the Lord set up is his children, man. And the Lord is dealing with his select. You know, so when you chastise your child, you're doing in righteousness. Most jakes anyway, you know, even though two-thirds of our people are wicked. But most jakes, most parents that are there for their kids, they chastise their child in righteousness. So we just telling you, the Lord told us he's chastised us as our parents. So when he sent us through certain obstacles and sent us through hell, you know, being harassed by the police, by the Edomites, you know, some of us that was born of a woman, the scriptures say born of a woman few of days. So therefore you got a, a kid that grew up from his mom's and he in and out of jail. You know, you become a gangbang or whatever you come, you know, and then he had to learn the hard route in order for him to understand how to actually live as a man. You know, it took, it took him to go through hell just so that he can see how he should live his life as a man and without going through emotions and feelings, man. You know? So I, hey, uh, real quick, I got a quick precept. It's uh, 1 Peter 1 and 6, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season. If need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be trial with fire, mm -hmm. might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shai. Exactly, man. Because us being in this truth, the Heavenly Father is chastising us, man. It's a scripture that says, I forgot the Psalms, where it says, um, you know, if your father and your mother forsake thee, it's the Heavenly Father the that Lord take us up. the Lord take you up. The Lord carried that burden, you know. So guess what? The Lord chastises us in a great way so that we can do right and please him. Because guess what? We all deserve death. You know, according to the law. But it's Yahweh Shah that came to give grace. You know, so it's us, it's for us to take this chastity for the Lord. Because it's only for what? Read that scripture again, Salak, so you still got it? Yeah. Uh, no, it's you know what I'm saying? Because it's what? It's just for a season, man. And it's light. You know? Yeah. Uh, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that right. perisheth. The trial of your faith is being more precious than gold, man. Because the trial of our faith, believing in Yahweh Shah in his absence, that's powerful, man. The, the Lord cherished these men. The, the, these men are precious to the Lord. Even though the Lord said Moses and David was his friend, well, guess what? The elect and 144,000 that believes in his absence, serving the Lord now, it's precious to the Lord, and they become the Lord's friend too, man. Come on. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of your house shot. So guess what? All the shit that we go through, man, suffer it, man. Don't be ashamed of the Lord, and don't let no seducing spirits come upon you. Because it's a great reward when your house shot come. It's a great reward when your house shot come, man. I got a few up. It says, um, Proverbs chapter 23 and 13, withhold not correction from the child, mm -hmm. for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Right. So, you know, like how you look at the, the basic instance of you dealing with your child, you want to make sure that you steer him in the right uh, uh, direction. But, you know, you have the mother in the instance, she'd be like, oh, no, I don't hit my child, I don't hit my child. You know, but she want to baby him. You know, and when he grow up, he won't be in the right spirit because of that. But if you chasten your child along the way, you know, when he get older, even though he don't see it now, he may just think that you, he's being uh, you, he's being hard on you. But when you get older, you're going to realize and understand why your father was so hard on you to make a man out of you, you know, so that he can be proud of, of you, you know, when you actually grow up to actually be a man and to carry yourself as a man, you know. And when we look at the instances of how we was in the world. Every all of us had certain ways about ourselves, you know. But what the Lord was slowly but surely molding our characters through our everyday action when we was in the world, and the Lord was guiding us, you know, uh, to be ready, you know, to be able to accept this truth and be meant for Him, you know. Like I can remember with myself a quick uh, e example, you know, I seen the leader of our camp, you know, in 2008, you know, at least two or three times, and I wanted to ask him questions, but I was scared to. You know, but the Lord held my spirit back because at that time, you know, I know I wasn't ready. Because now that I know the truth, I know back then I wasn't ready. So the Lord had to constantly put me do different things, you know, and to get that, that you know, uh, uh, pussyfoot and woman spirit up off me so that I could actually be a man for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah and stand up in righteousness. Because if the Lord would have brought me into the truth back then, I probably would have fell out over a woman, man. You know, so the Lord constantly got to put us through things, you know, and when we have our spiritual birth, the Lord knows that we are ready to accept this truth as men. 
You know? Right. It's a, a little more. It says, Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. Right, so, you know, that, that's the point. You know, the Lord want to deliver us from this destruction that's to come. You know, the Lord want us to, uh, uh, is purifying his elect, his 144,000, you know, through this hell. And, that, and the only way to do that is for him to chastise us every step of the way, man, for him to constantly be on us. You know, because if you give your child some type of leeway, then he's going to go according to his own mind and think that he can do what he want to do. But the Lord got to make sure that you're, we're on his program, on his timeline, you know? Yeah. And I got one, one, one more verse. It says, Yea, my ring shall rejoice when thou lips speak right things. And guess what? Because what happens of when you know pe people of the world, your family members, a lot of people, they don't say this now, but people used to say that, yo, look, I'm glad I got my ass whooped. I ain't like the rest of these niggas out here. These niggas out here are bugging. You know, look how they walking with their pants down. We had to quit my pants up. They tell you all a bunch of the stories, man. And guess what? It says, Yea, my ring shall rejoice when the lips speak right things. Because when you was chastised as a kid not to do those things of the knuckleheads, you know, or you went through what you went through, then guess what? When you get a certain age, you look back and reflect and you go, I'm happy the Lord chastised me because I ain't like that. You know, I ain't doing that, man. And that's just referring to us being in his truth. It's the Lord's movie. The Lord is molding his men to be a certain way because he's building his foot soldiers. We foot soldiers. You have the air force, the chariots. We foot soldiers for the Lord. You know, we waiting for Yahweh Shah, Shalom to come. And to be what? When he comes, we're going to be ready in the mindset, going to be ready. We're just going to have new bodies, man. You see, but our, but our minds are being prepared and ready for the day of battle.